What's going on, everybody? So I am recording this video just before we get Claire inside of the game. But this is a perfect time because I just went ahead and reviewed some of my previous videos talking about the new collab event. And I'm sure many of you have noticed the sort of increasingly steady supply, I guess you could say, of triple S characters. There are quite a few coming to the game, and this is becoming honestly a little bit of an issue in regards to how this game is built. If it were any other typical gacha game, getting every single new legendary or even every new epic isn't really a realistic expectation. However, in this game, the game, since it plays so much differently and we are kind of forced to have access to these characters or will be guarded from certain future content, this becomes a little bit more of an increasing problem. And this is something that's been mentioned on my previous videos about the collab because, well, many of you, including myself, are predicting to have at least four characters inside of the collab event, if not more. And with these four new characters released back to back, maybe we get one of them free like last time. We are going to have to spend a ton of limited cards to go ahead and collect them all. And because every single player has the potential to unlock every single character, that is and what does end up happening. No one wants to repeat a certain Northion situation where they don't have access to one of the strongest triple S's to have ever graced Eternal Evolution for a short period of time, or in Northion's case, a long period of time to help them progress. And so the game kind of heavily incentivizes you to pull for every new character. And if you're pulling for every new character and you're getting new characters as frequently as we have been, it starts to become a huge, huge fatiguing moment for a lot of free to play slash mid spenders out there. And that's what we're focusing on today. There is a lot of solutions to this, but not only is it OK, I have to spend on every single new character. And you can see for me, there are a lot of new characters that I still have yet to invest in, right? A lot of people are like, why don't you have Kusanagi at immortal level? Well, because by the time I was interested in going for her, well, I had already tested her out and we've already found out how powerful she could be at immortal and she wasn't really progressing my account. Now, I do make some exceptions for new characters to where I want to bring them up to immortal, like Ares, for example, um, for me to kind of just see what they're capable of and for testing purposes. But I also have characters like Arcadia or Tachikoma sitting at Mythic 2 level. Or a lot of my triple S's are sitting at Immortal 0 or Immortal 1. Some of my most used ones. We have like Cariolis that is Immortal 0, Jaina at Immortal 0. And I'm not someone that's really on the kind of really low income of limited cards. I'm kind of soaking up every single possible one I could pretty much get while also getting access to some additional rewards and so because of that even i am feeling a little bit of fatigue and i even have maxed out triple s's from characters that are like way way old and you get additional triple s copies for them like daniel or in on Poo's case a while a while back even i still feel the fatigue of the triple s just being really difficult to obtain or just being such a massive grind now, as I said, there are solutions to this, which is kind of what I want to focus on because I, I, I do like them bringing new characters to the game and I don't think they should stop. I think that, hey, we don't want new characters every single week. That's not necessarily a good way to go about things, but there's really two ways, uh, overarching ways, I should say, to kind of fix this. One, you can kind of increase the supply of limited cards or potentially uh, give us additional rewards in some other area for this, like gene hybrids, right? Or you can start to buff older triple S characters. And this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting. Uh, older triple S characters and also elites. It's kind of strange to see a gacha game like this that has basically never had a 
balance patch. Anyone that's been playing the game or most games for a year has probably seen at least a couple, if not more, balance patches in the game. And when I say balance patch, I mean literally patches dedicated to multiple characters getting either reworks, retootings, or just modifying numbers slash slightly changing skills. And the closest we've ever gotten has been like with Bada, for example, when Bada came out and she was really, really poor. They modified her radius on her um, range. They also did that for Miranda shortly after she came to the game. These characters only got minor adjustments and only directly after, like the week after they were released. Most characters, in fact, I can't recall a singular time where a character has received a major change in their overall either kit or viability after the first week of them being released inside the game, which is really, really strange for the game or games in general. Honestly, characters that, uh, you know, you previously might have used a ton, as we've said before, Crete, uh, Artis. Um, oh my goodness, I even forgot this guy's name. I haven't used him so long. Nothing. Uh, Leo, right? Like all these characters could use a buff and you might be surprised for me saying hey why leo isn't he still a good character yeah he's fine but he's not like the vanguard carrier not one of the top tier vanguards not even close uh, in my opinion we're even getting a new vanguard coming i doubt that he's going to be even in potentially the top three at this point in a lot of scenarios which is crazy to me we could definitely see some numbers buffs especially when you compare like damage numbers from like Rebecca to damage numbers like Emma's they're just in two separate categories and then on top of that Rebecca is also offering so much utility for her team whereas Emma is just offering that little bit of damage so there's definitely some retunings that could easily happen or as I said earlier you could focus on giving us additional resources now the best way I think this could happen is ancient altar this is a unused game mode in my opinion because it's never been in a state that i think is actually enjoyable and should be in this game the fact that you get to hell difficulty and you're sitting there trying not to beat it because you want to beat it in two attempts rather than one is just super counterintuitive and in of that just that itself should be corrected but giving us additional difficulties because of how easy it is, and then perhaps ramping up limited cards as well as gene hybrids in the Ancient Altar could be an easy way to keep pace with kind of all the new characters coming to the game and kind of reduce that fatigue that a lot of people are feeling. Of course, you can do nothing, and that's, you know, totally up to the developers as well as uh, the community at large. And I'm sure some people in the comment section will argue, hey, they shouldn't have to do anything. You know, we shouldn't be entitled to certain characters or a certain amount of resources and yeah that is a fair and valid point on the other hand this is usually a question about fun and whether or not this is going to create a healthier kind of player base or potentially bring more people in and i would say generally speaking the vast majority of players are looking to try out new triple s's and not feel like they're pressured into every single one without having any leeway because their new triple s's are going to leave the game and perhaps never come back right? Imagine those people that were waiting for Northion and then missed Northion and then waited six months and then just quit the game. They are sitting there thinking like, yeah, they just paid to win Northion and he never came back. People don't want to experience that. It tends to be a little bit unfun. And of course, being able to kind of change up your teams and potentially readjust your strategies could be a lot of fun for people who are just kind of casually playing the game. So I'd love for them to take a look at either one of these. I would love to sit here and go over a balance patch and, you know, kind of understand the implications and test all these older characters. But it's kind of a shame when, oh, you get a new Triple S or in this case, Samael came to the game and you're like, okay, well, who do we want to test them against? It's like, oh, we don't need to test them against Helentus. We don't need to test them against Bailey because we already know those characters are trash. And they'll always be trash, right? And then now we have Samael, Kusanagi, Dominic, Rickert, the next Triple S that comes to the game, we're like, okay, is he, are they better than Semeao? Are they better than Kusanagi? Great. Okay, we could just drop them off the list and never look at them ever again. 
and I don't necessarily think that's a great idea either. So honestly, both of these things would be great to have in the game. Even if they don't add the additional limited cards, just having the balance changes inside the game can lead to a lot of refreshing moments and people won't be as stressed about, you know, getting every new character and feeling like they have to invest in those new characters, not just pick them up because they are being able to use or they're able to use older versions of their same triple S's that they've already invested into. So would love for them to take a look at this and i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below because i do think this is something that uh is sorely lacking how has pretty much always has lacked in eternal evolution thanks for watching and i'll see you off the next one <laughs>